Hey, it's me, Moses Ender. Today, I will cover the topic of the bottom band of cylindrical lithium ion cells, such as 18650 or 21700 cells. It is an additional feature in the design of some of the newer cells that can help to release the internal pressure in case things go wrong. The topic is related to my previous videos about the CID and the mantle, so if you haven't seen them yet, please check the links at the end of this video. In case things go wrong in a lithium-ion battery, the worst case scenario is a thermal runaway. That means the decomposition processes in the battery cell release more heat than the battery can dissipate, which leads to a self-accelerating reaction, which releases lots of heat and gases as reaction products. As a consequence, the pressure inside the cell increases rapidly. And to avoid an explosion of the cell, this pressure must be released in a controlled way. This job is typically done by the vent structure that is part of the CID assembly in the top cap of cylindrical cells. But especially in cells that are designed for high energy density or high capacity, the vent in the top cap is sometimes not sufficient to release the gases fast enough. And there are several possible reasons for that. First, higher capacity materials and designs store more energy in the same volume. So if something goes wrong, it also releases more energy, leading to a more violent reaction. The second reason can be the location where the thermal runaway starts within the cell. If it is close to the bottom of the cell, the gas has to go through the long direction of the cell until it reaches the vent, leading to higher pressures inside the cell, which could breach the cell housing. And third, the top cap vent can be blocked by the interior of the cell, be it the mantle or the electrodes. In such cases, the gas might not exit the cell fast enough, leading to pressure peaks and worst case, an uncontrolled breach. There are a couple of mitigation options to avoid this risk of an uncontrolled breach. That can be a lower triggering pressure of the vent, a larger vent cross-section in the top cap, a mantle in the core of the cell that stabilizes the jelly roll and support the gas transport to the top cap, or an increase of the cell housing thickness. In addition, or alternatively, a second vent structure at the bottom of the cell can be implemented, which will be the main topic of this video. The bottom vent reduces the risk of an uncontrolled rupture or explosion of the cell through decrimping, sidewall rupture or bottom rupture. A nice visualization of the working principle of the bottom vent is shown in this high-speed x-ray video from Donald Finnegan. He has recorded an 18650 cell with a bottom vent while undergoing a thermal runaway. First, you see some slight movement of the jelly roll due to the gas generation. Then the top bottom part of the housing bends outwards and a gas pocket forms before the vent opens and releases the gas. With the progress of the thermal runaway in the cell, you also see the bright round spots that get ejected. This seems to be molten aluminum from the cathode current collector. And all of that happens in only a bit more than a second. These are very rare views into what happens in a cell during thermal runaway. And if you are interested in these topics, take a look at Donald Finnegan's papers and the supporting material that he has published on his YouTube channel. As you have seen, the bottom vent is included in the lower part of the cell cam by notching of the cell housing to locally reduce the wall thickness, which creates an additional weak point. This Notching or grooving can be done from the outside or the inside of the cell. If done from the inside, an additional engraving on the outside of the cell is sometimes added to indicate the vent area, which needs to be considered during welding and pack design. The typical triggering pressure of the bottom vent is a bit higher than the top vent burst pressure, but still lower than the burst pressure of the rest of the housing. To show you an example from a real cell, you can take a look at a study performed by NASA to evaluate the safety of high energy 18650 cells. One of the cells that was studied is the Sony VC7, an 18650 cell with a capacity of 3.5 amp hours, leading to a specific energy of 269 watt hours per kg and an energy density of 735 watt hours per liter. This cell has a top vent burst pressure of 25.6 bar, a bottom vent burst pressure of 35.2 bar, and a header burst pressure of 57.9 bar. So the idea is that in case the top vent is not sufficient to release the gas fast enough, 
an additional release path for the gas is opened by the bottom vent. In theory, that should eliminate an uncontrolled breach of the cell housing. What the NASA study has found is that the occurrence of sidewall ruptures and decrimping of the top cap is reduced but not completely eliminated in all cases. It strongly depends on the root cause of the thermal runaway as well as the specific pack design. So this point has to be investigated in specific pack designs and failure modes in case you need a quantitative evaluation of the effectiveness of the bottom end. In general, the bottom end is a comparably easy method to increase the safety of a cylindrical cell, which effectively reduces the risk of an uncontrolled breach of the cell housing. That's it for today. I hope you found this video interesting and learned something new. If so, please leave a like and subscribe. And in case you have further questions or remarks, please let me know in the comments below. See you in one of my next videos. Till then, stay safe and stay charged.